Bringing back all the bloody memes. Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I've been thinking about an idea that has been going over this whole week, and the main uh, thrust of the idea is, what is the perfect Battle Pass vehicle? I've seen a lot of reactions uh, to the Season 4 of the Battle Pass. I also had a look back at reactions at the first Battle Pass, the second Battle Pass, and the third Battle Pass, just to try and get an inkling of what individuals were interested in. And I've tried to base my thoughts around those and try to work out what would be something to look for when it comes to Battle Pass vehicles. The main thrust of this, or the main thrust of this idea is, it seems whatever is announced, there is a different subset, or maybe even the same subset of people, who are not happy uh, with the... Um, with the things that are on offer and this may just come down to the fact that you know people play specific nations uh, they want something for their specific nation and so on and so forth and also at the same time you know they uh, want to have uh, something which is going to be useful for them and therefore the thing that's put in front of them wouldn't be too useful so uh, they're not interested in it and therefore have to voice their concern with it because it's not so useful to them. It's pretty much as simple as that. And then when we have a look at other factors as well, the fact that the Battle Pass is a paid entity, uh, you've got to have something which is um, eye-opening, or you've got to have something which makes people want to purchase this, whether it's through its efficiency, or whether it's through its uniqueness, or whether it's through its interest in the vehicle itself in a historical fashion. Like, uh, for example, the EBR. The EBR is the most recent example of this because uh, obviously a lot of people have talked about the idea that this should be a tech tree vehicle. And I think I actually agree with that, or at least, you know, in part, I agree with that. There are some other EBRs they could stick in the tech tree. I think the EBR in general should be uh, at least a variant of it in the tech tree because of its historical significance. Um, but the fact is, you also need a hook, line, and sinker for the battle pass itself. And the EBR is one of those vehicles, basically because of how the EBR-75 uh, that was in the game, or still is in the game when it came in, and its uh, powerfulness, that means a lot of people think that the new one will be powerful and therefore will grind the battle pass to be able to get it, even if it isn't as powerful as the release EBR-75. So you've got the hook, line, and sinker there. Um, for the paid uh, battle pass and then you have a bunch of other factors you've got to think about as well you've got the premium aspect is it premium is it non-premium uh, what tech tree is it for is it beneficial for myself is it beneficial for other people and the the way i've come to realize about all of these things is there isn't really a perfect way of adding in a battle pass vehicle that is um, everybody is happy with. The only way you'd be able to do it is if it was a unique vehicle which was a premium with good bonuses, easy to get, and also free, and also at the same time available for every single tech tree in the game. And obviously this isn't possible. You'd also need it to be a plane, a tank, and a ship all in one, and even maybe a helicopter, uh, which of course, once again, can't happen. So it's just one of these weird scenarios where I feel like whatever is going to get announced, where it could be the most perfect vehicle, or it could be something that was requested for a long time, such as the M6 from the last Battle Pass. I actually went back through the um i went back through like the forums i went back through uh the way back machine and i found posts from 2015 2014 even when uh, ground forces were being talked about where people were asking for this vehicle so it's one of those which has been at least in the conscience for an incredibly long time but when it comes out it's a disappointment because it's not, you know, crazy good, even though it is a premium and it works incredibly well. And we see it as one of the most disappointing battle passes season three, even though I don't think it was that uh, disappointing. So now we come to what we see in season four. A lot of people have talked about it being copy and paste, or even though it isn't copy and paste, but I understand the idea. Everything is based off similar versions that we already have in game. But the fact is, they're all also premiums. 
And this, to me, is the key factor. I think the Battle Pass going forward should be used as a way to be able to get similar vehicles into the game with slight uniquenesses to them, whether it be camouflage, uh, whether it be slightly different guns, whether it be slightly different engine, but to have good grinding vehicles so people can explore different areas of the game. One of the biggest issues for me when it comes to War Thunder is the fact that you have individuals who focus heavily on one or two or maybe even three tech trees and what this ends up meaning is you get a lot of crazy discussions and uh, bias discussions uh, when it comes to uh, the game balancing and also just the general matchmaking of it. If there was some way of being able to add vehicles into the game which could be available for everyone at a decent price which is what the battle pass stuff is you know you're still talking about twelve dollars for four premium vehicles in the next battle pass if they keep the price in the same plus all the other stuff that's insane value but if they could add something like this in therefore it would promote the use in other trees just like stuff like the p39 for france does and now the a6m6 for japan does and it can get people into playing new experiences get up to that rank two or three area then you can start doing dailies and specials in those nations and then boom you have a new set of people playing those nations i think for me that is the perfect uh, set of battle pass vehicles some uh, vehicles which are premium vehicles which are mid-tier rank three or four um, rank three for naval and then rank three or four for aviation or ground and also decent bonuses on them similar to vehicles that are already around and used to be able to get through specific areas of the tech tree so therefore you can start grinding tech trees alongside doing dailies and specials those to me would be the criteria that would be set up when it comes to the unique vehicles when it comes to the vehicles which you know you want to see um which are interesting like for me i, I would have loved to see the elc series in this battle pass um that that would have been really good but at the same time what if instead of in the battle pass uh, you have these vehicles. What about having them in events? What about having them in the summer events and in the winter events? So use those events to give the unique vehicles and use the battle pass to give just solid grinders, which people can pick up as long as they once again grind through the game and get uh, some really nice awards for. Um, for me, that should be the symbol of the battle pass because that's kind of what the symbol of the war bond shop used to be um, the war bond shop used to be if you grinded a lot you got these vehicles you could then grind more so because the battle pass is also based off the war bond shop that's what should be focused on uh, when it comes to it so i think when i when i look at these vehicles for this battle pass i actually agree with all of the picks if we base it on this criteria and as long as in future events, which aren't the Battle Pass, which aren't, you know, continuously ongoing things, as long as those uh, ones have the unique vehicles. Because unique vehicles are interesting. Stuff like the Lorraine 37L, for example. Very interesting and unique vehicle. Not exactly the best, but still interesting. And that, to me, would be what those events would portray. If we get a system where when it comes to the events, like the summer and winter events and also the Build-A-Bear events, these are just events which have... Um uh, th these are just events which have similar vehicles to the battle pass then once again there's going to be a call for uniqueness um, and uh, it's going to have to be found but for me at least for the season four the battle pass the theme looks interesting we're going to have to find out what happens with it next week the vehicles themselves i think are all very good grinders and should be very fun uh, to play for a lot of people and also for it, the criteria for what I've at least talked about when it comes to a perfect battle pass vehicle. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank BRFC, Swollen Ostrich, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Conte Baraka, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, Lafouche, Bereen and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.